Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're taking an in-depth look at weapons in Far Cry 5. A big thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out the game, click the link in the video description. Like previous entries in the franchise, Far Cry 5 is an open world FPS where you fight extremist bad guys and their nutty henchmen. The weapon arsenal available to you has been expanded upon from past games in the series with even more options to choose from, including melee weapons. Each class of weapons has its own strengths and weaknesses, but all of them include viable options for getting through any mission or situation in the game. Now in the game's opening moments, you start off with a pistol. In general, pistols serve as a good close quarter weapon but are still effective at even medium ranges if needed. However, against armor targets, animals, and drugged up cultists, they're not particularly effective. Given how limited your ammo reserves are at the start of the game, investing in a pistol with good firepower and attachments is a pretty smart move and can help you get through some of the early game missions. Fortunately though, the game quickly throws additional weapons your way. By the end of the opening mission, you'll have both a pistol and an assault rifle. As you rank up the resistance meter in each area of the game, Game, new, more powerful weapons will be unlocked. Stores throughout the map will have the full stock of weapons and attachments to choose from. Enemies, of course, will also drop their weapons that they're carrying when they're killed, and you can go over and pick those up. Now, the next class of weapons, shotguns, are great for taking out armored targets and animals up close. Most of them are pump action and will take a while to reload. They work best as backup weapons for situations where you've run out of ammo with your more versatile weapons like the assault rifles or machine guns. Investing in perks that give you additional weapon slots early on is a great way to avoid situations where you're out of firepower. SMGs, on the other hand, don't quite have that one-shot firepower of assault rifles, but they still have some pretty good advantages. They're more accurate from the hip, and they have very fast fire rates. Against unarmored targets, SMGs are very effective, making them great as stealth weapons in close quarter situations. They serve as another good backup weapon to a rifle or machine gun. Now, assault rifles are probably going to be the weapon class most players sink a lot of resources into. They offer a great range of options and plenty of damage to take out even armored targets at range. They still lack the single shot damage of sniper rifles or machine guns, but most of the enemies in the game drop assault rifles or ammo for them. This makes ARs ideal for situations where you're going up against several enemies, as you'll almost always be able to replenish your ammo from your downed foes. That said, their long-range capabilities aren't quite as good as sniper rifles. While you can equip attachments like ACOG sights that extend the range of the assault rifles, they're still not going to down most enemies in a single shot unless you get a headshot. With the suppressor equipped, assault rifles are solid stealth weapons that don't sacrifice firepower for speed or hipfire accuracy like submachine guns do. Now, sniper rifles are probably the most powerful and difficult weapons to use in Far Cry 5. Their damage per shot is superior to pretty much every other weapon class, but of course that comes at a cost of not being particularly great in close to medium range combat. Obviously, they are great for picking off enemies at long range, and that can make clearing out outposts the breeze. But they're not general purpose weapons, and having a good backup weapon will be necessary to complement your loadout. Luckily, if the idea of being an elite sniper really appeals to you, you'll be able to pick up sniper rifles off of enemies pretty early on in the game, and the ammo isn't too rare. Now, machine guns are a lot of fun in this game, and they're another likely option that most players will sink a lot of resources into. They don't offer the same precision as other weapon classes, which limits their utility in hostage rescue missions and general stealth combat. Machine guns really excel at taking down big groups of enemies quickly. Not having to constantly reload gives you a lot of advantages, especially against low-tier enemies. They're also pretty effective against vehicles, but they're not necessarily a good replacement for some of the game's launchers. Now, melee combat in Far Cry 5 has been expanded from previous games in the franchise. All of the available melee weapons serve basically the same purpose, and pretty much anything on a stick can be used as a melee weapon. If you feel like beating some bad guys over the head with a shovel or a pipe, that's totally a viable option. The bows are probably the ultimate weapon for silent takedowns. They offer a ton of flexibility, even at longer ranges. The only enemies bows are really weak against are the more armor targets and drug-crazed cultists. Bows will let you sit at the edge of an objective area and pick off enemies without setting outposts on high alert. 
Avoiding detection is really the key to a good stealth run and bows have pretty much every advantage you'd need. You can also retrieve your arrows from downed enemies which makes keeping your ammo stocked up relatively easy. Now throwables like grenades and molotovs are better as a distraction options than for taking out tons of enemies. That said, setting out a remote charge and waiting for enemies to walk past is a great way to open up an area for attack. Despite how quickly enemies tend to move around, using throwables can still be fun or it can always serve as a decent distraction regardless. If you don't have a launcher to take out a vehicle, using multiple throwables is a decent alternative. Throwing knives are also available to you as a stealthier option. They work just like throwables, but have their own slot in your inventory. You start off with three ammo slots for them, but can upgrade that via the perk system. They work well for taking out unarmored targets in close range and can serve as a good backup to the melee combat system or having a suppressed weapon. And then of course there's weapon customization, which isn't limited to just attachments. There's a ton of skin options to give your chosen weapons a little extra flair. Regardless of what weapons you choose, every class is generally viable in most situations. If you find a weapon you really like, it's pretty easy to keep it throughout the campaign thanks to perks that upgrade each weapon's class damage and the wealth of weapon attachments that improve their performance. That being said, there are obviously some weapons that outperform others. Assault rifles are the most versatile weapons in the game, but having other weapons like shotguns or sniper rifles as backup is still something I would recommend. ARs often don't have the sheer stopping power of a shotgun for point blank range or the cool factor of those long range headshots that sniper rifles offer. Now when it comes to vehicle combat, I gotta say it is an absolute blast bombing around the forest in a jeep or other kinds of vehicles, especially when it's being driven by a co-op teammate or AI companion. Being able to lean out the window and mow down attacking vehicles is quick and satisfying. That said, if you're not being driven around, it's better to evade enemies. Your combat options are pretty limited when you're behind the wheel. Now, all ground vehicles do allow you to shoot out of them from both the passenger and driver's seat. Planes and helicopters will only let you shoot out of them as the passenger. And when you're driving, you only have access to a pistol. Then again, you can also run over your enemies. And if you're in a bigger vehicle, like a big rig, it's easier to push other vehicles off the road or ram them to submission. Now, there are some pretty unique vehicles out there that break some of these rules. For example, the Widowmaker semi-truck and the Aerial Force helicopter have mounted weapons. You can fire these weapons from the driver's seat. They'll cause massive amounts of destruction, and it's a pretty considerable upgrade from leaning out the passenger side window. One of the best things about this game in the franchise is that the developers always give you a huge amount of weapons and vehicles to approach your combat situations, giving you as much creative freedom as you want. Far Cry 5 expands upon that further than any other game in the franchise and does it with some style. Once again, I'd like to thank Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.